When you look at the X-ray spectrum, the peaks are of course very important, but you'll also notice that there is this nice little curve below the peaks, which is pleasant, and so we should try to account for it. So this curve is called the continuous spectrum. So how does this continuous spectrum come about? Now remember you are bombarding this metal with a high amount of these high-speed electrons. Now as an electron approaches this metal, remember that the metal itself contains many charged particles like electrons and of course the metal ions. And so there is a whole bunch of electric fields in this region, especially as you come closer and closer to the metal. E-fields, of course, have the ability to push these bombarding electrons around, and so as he comes in, he may get deflected every now and then. But you see, every time it gets deflected, this electron that's coming in is going to lose some kinetic energy. And when this kinetic energy is lost, some of it gets converted into a photon. And very importantly, this process is a random process. And so the energy of this photon released is a random one. And so the wavelength of this photon released is a random one as well. And so this electron might get deflected a couple of times before it finally goes into the metal. And so each time it does that, it starts releasing all these photons of random wavelength and of course, think about the sheer number of electrons coming in and therefore the sheer number of these random photons being produced. And inevitably, a lot of these randomly produced photons will fall onto your spectrum analyzer. And so you get all these random photons being collected, but in small amounts. And this is what contributes to this continuous spectrum that you see, and therefore it is it is quite comprehensive. There are wavelengths of all sorts, but none of them have a particularly high intensity because of the random nature of these photons. There just ain't that many of each type of these photons. And so the continuous spectrum is quite useless. It's just noise, if you like. And so you also expect that every time you repeat the experiment, the peaks will remain at the same position, but this spectrum may change you know, a little bit every, every time you repeat the experiment. Now, something else that is also very uh, striking is the fact that there is a sudden cutoff over here. And so we call this the minimum wavelength. And so we just have to understand that there is some upper bound on the energy of this photon that can be released. And so we make this assumption that if an electron possesses a certain amount of kinetic energy, we assume that somehow in just one interaction, all of this kinetic energy becomes one photon. Though unlikely, it, it does represent the upper limit of how much energy these random photons could have. And so the energy of this photon would be Hc over lambda naught. And this energy of the photon would be the amount of kinetic energy that the bombarding electron possessed, which is equal to the amount of electric potential energy that it lost in the initial acceleration process, QV. And so we can see that the uh, minimum wavelength lambda naught is directly related or inversely related to the accelerating potential that accelerated these, electro these bombarding electrons in the first place.